Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. We have an amazing, incredible, special guest this morning on Faith Rally. It's going to be incredible, and I am going to add her on in about two seconds. Hey! Hi! Oh, wait, there we go. There you are! There, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to find the buttons to push, and it just popped up. There we go. Okay. Yeah, well, I requested you, so. Oh, perfect. I was trying to, be, I was trying to do the gentleman, gentlemanly thing <laughs> and add you on. Thank you. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. I'm wonderful. <laughs> Uh, I'm just another day in the life here at home for me. <laughs> I know. Well, we are, uh, for those of you Californians out there, we, uh, we just got locked down last night, the strictest quarantine rules of any state in America. And so thankfully, both Kim and I live somewhat of a hick lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <Proud of> so, it. <laughs> so we can, uh, we can do our thing out on our land, um, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But hey, listen, my heart in doing this was I've been I've been hosting these every day, just having different friends jump on. And I know that right now, the digital space in Instagram is covered with refrigerator, Bible verses and, and great things, which I think are awesome, right? But I also think that the amazing thing about this, uh, you know, this social distancing thing, which I think actually it's, it's ironic, but I think it can be the thing that brings us together. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, that we can actually lean into each other. And um, so I wanted to just hear your thoughts. Like, how are you processing this? Like as a worshiper, as a mom, like you have, you know, mm -hmm. you, you want to kind of create a place of peace for your kids, but yet you have to be aware of the things that are happening, you know, I was on a call, I was on a call mm -hmm. with the White House yesterday and, you know, they're taking it very seriously, the, the mm -hmm. pace at which it's spreading and, you know, encouraging everybody to follow the guidelines. Don't live in fear, but follow the guidelines because they're for our own good. How are you navigating all this? Share with us what's. <laughs> well, um, you know, to be honest, um, being stuck at home with my kids, homeschooling them is actually my life every day. So <laughs> nothing has changed for me. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I think that we have a, a much bigger enemy in all of this than a virus, and that's fear. And the Bible is obviously very clear about, um, you know, our battles and that they're not against flesh and blood, but they are against principalities and powers. And I do think that that is the bigger thing that we need to be um, addressing in all of this is, is fear. And so um, every night with my kids, we've been praying and talking about fear and anxiety and what we do to get rid of those things. Um, last night, my kids were, were saying, um, I wish that I could see fear so that I could fight it for real. And I said, well, you could imagine fear. And then we started, um, imagine fear as a, you know, a tiny little bug that you can step on it and squash it. And, and then it was imagine fear as a cookie and I could swallow it and eat it and it's gone. <laughs> imagine fear as a, you know, they were coming up with all of these things and all of these ways of how they could, you know, um, get rid of fear. And, um, I think as a parent, it's wonderful to be like processing these things with our kids. I, I think trying to hide it from our kids is not going to work. Kids are yeah. so smart. And so they're, they're, um, they're smart. Oh, yeah. They, they pick up on everything. They and so I think <laughs> talking to them about it is really good. But I think um, I, I, I am definitely we are we are listening to what the government says. We are staying inside and we are doing our part that way, saying quarantined. Um, but I think that the bigger issue that we all need to think about and address is, is the fear and getting rid of that. Yeah. It was interesting. I had some people on, um, yesterday morning, we were talking about, um, how, you know, this is a really big test for, you know, I feel like for the body of Christ and for leaders at worship leaders, like faith leaders like do we actually believe in the songs that we sing like are we like are we full of conviction or are they just nice fluff 
uh, that we do uh, to, to engage people? Like, do we, are, are we essentially, and this is what I feel like for me, like, am I going to become this, the songs that I sing? Am I going to become, mm-hmm. you know, the words that I preach? And so tell me as a kind of as a worship leader and, you know, all of our lives have been kind of thrown up upside down. I mean, the tours, the, you know, the, mm-hmm. the plans, the events and, you know, for a lot of us, that's a bit of our, our livelihood and, and, and even people mm-hmm. in our organizations, uh, you know, you're part of Jesus Culture Church. And I know it's changed things for you. I'm up here at Bethel. It's changed things for us. Mm-hmm. How are you navigating that right now? And what's your encouragement to everybody out there that's in the same place as us? Yeah. Um, my confidence is not in a place. My confidence is in Christ alone. And I think that it's really powerful as leaders to to in humility say I don't know everything I don't have all the answers um, but I do know um, what we should do in this time which is to keep pressing into Jesus to keep moving towards him yeah. to keep our eyes on him um, I think that's a really powerful statement right there to just to approach everything with a lot of humility um, also you know I was, like take away the songs for a moment our jobs as worship leaders is to serve the body of Christ so if we can't do that the way that we normally do right now, if that's through like, um, you know, the the live recordings or the the tours or the, you know, Sunday mornings or all the church services that we have, um, let's get creative that we can do that. Like so many of us have been jumping on here and doing worship sessions on, on Instagram and, and doing this live or doing fun things like this. I think this is a really beautiful way to still continue to serve the body of Christ which is ultimately what we're called to do. We are called to serve them. And so I think um, offering our support, offering our prayers, offering our words of encouragement, offering our um, pieces of, of hope. But also, I think even, um, I've been trying to think of how can we keep people laughing? Um, it says in Proverbs 17, yeah. 22, that laughter is good medicine. And it is. Yeah. I believe that. At my house, we have been trying to crack ourselves up. So we've been trying to keep ourselves <laughs> laughing. And I think that is a, a powerful, powerful tool. I tried to make people laugh last night by posting a, a bison that I shot with my bow. And I said, I've got enough meat for the end times. A lot of people thought it was funny. A lot of people didn't. But um, <laughs> I'm, try- <laughs> I'm trying my part as well. It's- uh, but no. Do I? It's a different life when you grew up on a when you grew up on a farm and like all of your meat comes from what somebody went out and killed. It's it's a different life. It is, and and sadly, it's it's a life that's you know that's very m- many Americans and people around the world are really disconnected from. And what's wild about it is I literally have like hundreds of pounds of meat. Like this is the best, leanest, most incredible meat on the planet and you can't buy meat at the grocery stores. I don't know what it's like where you are, but yeah, here in Reading, there's like no meat on the grocery store. So anyway, for such a time as this, right? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I think that's really good. What are some, yeah. What are some practical things? How are you doing that with your kids? Like keeping the joy, keeping fun, like lighthearted nature. Like, I don't know, maybe Mm -hmm. give some parents out there some ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, we are okay. So homeschool, like if you have not done homeschool before, you can probably, probably a lot of parents are feeling the pressure and the like, Oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Or a lot of parents are like, I don't know algebra. How am I going to teach my kid algebra and who uses algebra? (laughs) But this is, this is what we do to keep things like lighthearted in the middle of a lesson. I'll just say, okay, everyone, time to stop stand up and we have competition of you know like dumb little things like I'll do um clapping patterns with my hands and my legs and then have them do it and we'll speed it up faster and faster and they're like falling over laughing so hard trying to do it or we have um lego building competitions but it will be ridiculous things or um we love (laughs) we love playing hide and seek except our hide and seek is we jump out and scare each other because we think that's hysterical. Um, just not taking everything so 
seriously this requires us to like yeah. as parents to like loosen up a bit you know like there's a lot happening Become in the world kids right again. now yes but like find your inner child and and don't take yourself too yeah. seriously i can't tell you how many scenes yeah. from frozen i've had to reenact with my daughter recently or how many times she's put a <laughs> leash on me and told me I was her puppy. And I'm crawling around on all fours, <laughs> laughing like a puppy because this is what makes my daughter so happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so good, Kim. I mean, that, you know, I, I feel like we, we can control what we can control. And I think one of the things this, this reveals to us in our very self-sufficient American lifestyle is that it kind of shows us how fragile everything is and you know our we're only able to like put our fingerprints on these little humans and actually create a realm and an atmosphere where they can thrive in and what's happening around the rest of the world we just have so little control over and so i think it's man there's some really good lessons in the midst of this all mm-hmm Definitely. Absolutely. I Would mean, you, if we aren't learning and growing, what are we doing? <laughs> if we aren't, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, I, I think that it's important too. I mean, this gives us, this gives us the moment to go deep with our family. I was sharing with um, everybody yesterday, you know, I've been calling my grandma and my aunts and, you know, everybody that I should be keeping better touch with, but, you know, it just gives us the opportunity to reach out as family. Like, don't be my encouragement to a lot of you guys is though you're you just have to be social distancing. Don't be social isolating, like connect with people, okay. um, call people. I mean, everybody's going to pick up. They ain't got nothing else to do. So, so true. <laughs> um, hey, maybe you could pray over everyone. Maybe yeah, you could pray over everyone before we hop off this. Yes, for sure. All right. God, thank you so much for everyone joining us today and everyone who will see this later. And God, I just ask that um, you will um, strengthen us with and that you would drive out all fear and all work and anxiety, that your love would just settle upon us, upon our hearts and our minds, yeah. and that we would be overwhelmed with peace. And God, um, I ask that that would be all that comes out of us is that peace and that love that every yeah. time we type yeah. a, a comment on the on the internet or every time we make a phone call, um, every time we type a, type a text message, that everything, um, every word coming out of us will be words filled with hope, words filled with peace, and yeah. words filled with love. Yeah. That we would truly yeah. um, exemplify who you are, Jesus, in this um to the world to our friends to our family and god i ask that you would just um drop some more joy into our daily lives god that you would um help us to find yeah. um joy in the simplest of things and that you would help us to even find that inner child yeah. and pull that out to the surface yeah and, um to really Come on. have moments of pure laughter and joy um to just break away the heaviness and I thank you for yeah. that, Jesus. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kim. That's amazing. Yeah. I love your heart. I love, I love your spirit through all this. And I'm thinking just the lighthearted nature of this conversation. I hope it'll bless people. So thanks yes. for jumping on. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. All right. Back to, back to homeschool land. Back to what you yes. do every day.